everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Ahead, we might be looking at the two best running backs that the NFL has to offer. It's a marquee matchup. It's Le'Veon Bell and Ezekiel Elliott. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. A moment ago, here was the scene with the Cowboys emerging from their tunnel. It was loud. It's still loud. We're ready for football as the Cowboys get set to match up with Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Dan Bailey now to put the ball in the air. Gets strapped in. It's just about time to get the party started. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So the D-line's going to spread out. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. Dancing to his left. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. Trying here for Bryant, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Orlando Skandrick. And they will finally stop him as he's down to the 40-yard line. Brandon, when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach and talked about how they wanted to begin this game offensively, they talked about their script, didn't they? 10 to 15 plays, the first 10 to 15 they had on their script. Nowhere on the script was there throwing an interception, I have to believe. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And he'll be stopped up quickly here at the 38. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. 2017 for Zeke Elliott, a mixed bag. Would he play, would he not play? Well, he missed the six games from weeks 10 to 15. He still finished, though, Charles, 10th in the league in Russia. Just tells you about the talent that he has and how explosive he is and what he brings to the table. Look, he averaged 98 yards per game, 98.3 to be exact. A full 11 yards higher than number two Todd Gurley behind him. So that just tells you, if he plays a full season and he's averaging that type of yardage, I think Dallas's win numbers go up. Play clock winding down. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. Prescott now on second down. And he hits Jason Witten, the tight end. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. So here we go, first and 10 now. In motion left comes Bryant. Prescott looks to throw on first. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. T.J. Watt leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. Second down, Prescott. And this is incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They just get the playoff. Now Prescott. And he fires one, but incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, 
they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. And his kick is good. Didn't hit it all that well, but he got enough on it to put it through. And the Cowboys are going to jump out to a 3-0 lead. So they get the ball first here in front of the home crowd, under the lights, and they get three points out of it. And there's something about a night game, isn't there? A little extra snap, a little extra crisp in the air. What a terrific way to get things started. A little extra excitement, a little extra dazzle for the home crowd. I want to give a hat tip real quick, Charles, to J.J. Watt before the possession switches here. Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year, and they totaled up how much he helped raise for Hurricane Relief, $37 million. Incredible. Hurricane Harvey, which really hit the Houston area in a big way, and his original goal was $200,000. So, <laughs> And he will go down. A Cowboy sack. Demarcus Lawrence. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. On second down, Roethlisberger. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Yeah, Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down. Then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back. But it's a big play. They've got to hold up. Now Ben on third and long. They'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And down he'll go at the 25. 14 yards is the pick up there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Roethlisberger will stay out there, and they're going to go for it on fourth. They'll indeed go for it with Roethlisberger, eluding the pressure right. And that is caught. He's got his running back downfield. And <laughs> a big hit. Knocked down sideways. 30 yards on the pick up there. And the Steelers are going to have a first down. And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got to jump here. So the offense has it first and 10. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Burger on first down. Now Ben hit, and he lost the football. It's loose. On plays like this, when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Here's the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. Bell sheds him off. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Le'Veon Bell, 27 yards. And the Steelers have taken a first quarter lead. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball, too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. 
And this is up and good to make it 7-3. Boswell on now to kick this one away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. So the Cowboys offense coming back out there and after the excitement of that 13-3 year, the NFC East title 2016, they fell back to earth in 2017. They still finished 9-7, but not what you expected from them. No, the scoring differential was a big telltale about the difference between 2016 2017 they were plus 115 a season ago just plus 22 this year that means tighter games mm. can go either way and not enough of them win in Dallas's win column in this past season on second down Prescott again steps away to his left and they're able to get this one across the 35 Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Partner, as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Ezekiel Elliott going to take it the distance. Touchdown, Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott, 64 yards. And the Cowboys are in for six. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Bailey now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. Take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. So the football switching hands here in just a second. And, you know, Tom Brady, just to go off on a tangent for a second, may have lost the Super Bowl. But third MVP this past season and what he did at age 40, really something, right, Charles? Absolutely phenomenal. Ended up beating out Todd Gurley, the running back for the Los Angeles Rams. But he would have traded it for a Super Bowl win, don't you think? How about this? The last nine NFL MVPs to play in the Super Bowl that same season, 0-9. Oh, yeah. Can't we go all the way back to Kurt Warner in, what, 1999, where he won the double? We were going over that stat earlier. That is hard to believe. But he would have been the MVP had the Patriots pulled that one out. Yeah, he still has five rings, though, five Super Bowl titles for Brady. They'll go again with Bell. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed is that's going to move the chains. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Throw on first down with Roethlisberger. He's going to look deep down the field. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had the fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Flush to his right. Going deep here for... He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off Byron Jones. Before the offense changes hands here, let's look back at the Super Bowl February 5th. What a game. I know you were there calling it offensively, though. Impressive on both sides. It certainly was, and let's face it, if you're in Minnesota, it's cold outside, but you talk about the offenses, they heated up in a big way. And how about Nick Foles? The backup quarterback turned MVP. 373 yards, three touchdowns, and of course, the big one receiving on the Philly special. Quite a story. As you and I were talking about off-air, it was just a fluid game. Not a lot of penalties, just really clean play. Exactly. 
exactly the type of game the NFL needed for the audiences at home watching the game and, of course, people in attendance. A really well-played game. The first down carry by Elliott. Got some real estate inside the 30. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Prescott on first down. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. T.J. Watt in there to get him for his second sack of the night. A second down throw for Prescott. Got his man. It's Williams. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. Flushed out right. A bullet throw, but incomplete. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. So a good snap, good hold, and that one's right down the middle. Never in doubt. Just the way you used to hit him, Brandon. <laughs> Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. But before the possession switches here, I had written down that I wanted to talk about some of the awards this past season in the NFL. We know Brady was the MVP, but Todd Gurley, Offensive Player of the Year. How about that for a bounce back? Many were questioning whether he'd had a sophomore slump the season before. Didn't even get to 1,000 yards. Was a dominant force in 2017. How about his teammate Aaron Donald on the defensive side? He took home Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, very impressive. They had both sides of the ball. Sean McVay deserving, I think you would agree, of Coach of the Year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what he did for the Rams when they went from last in the league in scoring to leading the league in scoring and winning a division title. And how about the New Orleans Saints? Rookie of the Year, offense and defense. Alvin Kamara on offense, Marshawn Lattimore on defense. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Tyrone Crawford in there to get him for a loss of five. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He was trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. On third down, Roethlisberger escaping the pressure right. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. They'll stop troops. They're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. The offense staying out there. They look prepared to go here on fourth and ten. They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Now a first down carry by Bell. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. A minute 59 to go in the first half. 
We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now it's Roethlisberger. And he connects with Vance McDonald. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. down it's Roethlisberger and the tip there altered the ball flight and it falls incomplete it'll be second down the one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half they've come after them they've sat back I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing and they certainly have kept them on their toes that's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive Again on second and ten, it's Roethlisberger. Flush to his right, and his throw is going to be incomplete. Vance McDonald, the tight end, was the target, and that takes us from second to third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they incompletions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. To throw again is Roethlisberger. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard. Maybe from you. I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. The three straight incompletions. They don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on fourth. They'll try and throw for him with Roethlisberger. And he's going to have his running back. It's complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. 26 yards on the pick up there. And it'll give the Steelers a first down. On the counter, here's Bell. And now lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And, the and he's going to go down. He's sacked back at the 24. Demarcus Lawrence in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. To throw here, Roethlisberger. And Big Ben intercepted a third time. Picked off Byron Jones. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. CD, I want to get your thoughts on some potential free agents this offseason before we change the possession here. Now, caution, many of these guys could be resigned, I know, but who are some of them? Kirk Cousins is one. Yeah, we're talking about difference makers. Kirk Cousins at the quarterback position. He's going to be coveted around the league for by quarterback needy teams. Case Keenum had a big year. Could he move? But how about running backs? Le'Veon Bell, Deion Lewis, some pass catchers, Jimmy Graham, Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins, and about the guy who goes and gets quarterbacks. DeMarcus Lawrence had a monster year for Dallas last season. There are a lot of big names that could be out there as free agents. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Good. 
Throwing again. Prescott on second and ten. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. Final play of the half, Prescott. Flushed out right. Looking downfield for dead. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cowboys. Des Bryant as time expires in the first half. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. And just before the half ends, the prayer is answered defensively a disaster there. I know often we're surprised when this actually works. I mean, the excitement level goes way up, but maybe we shouldn't be because I know as a defender, you've got to play the ball in this situation, but you can't interfere with the receiver because, remember, it's a spot foul, and it'd be first and goal if it happens in the end zone, and you don't want to give up that play. That little bit of hesitancy often works really well for offensive guys. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Out come the Cowboys now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Prescott now on second down. That's complete to Williams out of the backfield. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Fresh set of downs here. And they'll send the slot in motion left. A first down throw for Prescott. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And some room to work. Ezekiel Elliott going to take it the distance. Touchdown, Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott, he scored on the ground and through the air. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. Extra point try by Bailey. He missed one earlier, remember, but this time he gets it to go. Bailey now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. And now a timeout called by the Cowboys defense. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. On second down, it's Bell. Room here to run. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. The Steelers picking up 15 yards there at a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. 
straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. And that's 30 yards now in the last two plays. Back-to-back 15-yarders, -back and they're rolling. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given a little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. And he just falls short down at the one-yard line. A good grab there by the former Central Michigan man, Antonio Brown. And he ate up some real estate on the catch, too, didn't he? I think the most impressive part of it, though, if there's a chance for him to get the football. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Le'Veon Bell, his second touchdown of the night. And the Steelers are able to close the gap just a bit. And they're able to cut the deficit to 12. Boswell on now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down at the 19. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. They were able to extend their lead with an opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter, but that just got matched a moment ago. So we know that what they discussed at the half worked. Now, what are the counters to that, right? You don't just run the same things over and over. Some do, but many will also show something and then come back with something else to keep the defense off balance. And the D looking like they may blitz. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So they got him coming up from his linebacker spot. And sometimes the position designation really doesn't matter. If you creep up to the line of scrimmage, you just have to look for the football. Make sure it moves before you do. Prescott from the gun. Going right side. He has Winton. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Prescott looks to throw on first. Forced out to his left. And now he'll let this one go deep. Back thrown across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked off. It's J.J. Wilcox. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. I think that interception happened for two reasons. Quarterback gets outside the pocket and panics a little bit. And receiver doesn't make sure he's absolutely in an open spot. So there's a guy lurking, took the ball from him. Yeah, so don't wave your arms, right, as a receiver if you're not wide open. Got to know that you're open. Otherwise, just don't do it. The Steelers able to pick up 18 yards there. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. So the D-line's going to spread out. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Demarcus Lawrence bringing the pressure again, and that is his third sack here tonight. On second down, Roethlisberger. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. And the Steelers on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This will be third and a mile. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And he finds McDonald. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A really nice gain of 25 yards. 
So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. It's a really nice gain of 25 yards. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred, still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the best player out on the field. You still carry that supreme arrogance with you and continue to fire the ball. I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interceptions and still lead your team to victory? And here comes play number six on this drive. Now Roethlisberger going to hand the bell. And he's going to work this one down to about the five. Well, that second down run, a big help. The seven yards leaves him with just a third and three now. Well, as the play call comes in on third down, you have to think about four down territory here. Down a few touchdowns. They need points, and they need big points. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll run it with Bell. And yeah, he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Le'Veon Bell taking it in from two yards out. And the Steelers have now made this a one-score game. And this is back to a five-point game. Boswell on now to kick this one away. And now here come the Cowboys. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run it. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Ryan Shazier able to run him down for a loss of a yard. Second down, Elliott. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. Caught left side, Williams. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a... Terrence Williams past the 20. Touchdown, Cowboys. Terrence Williams, 67 yards. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down? And, oh, okay, forget the field goal because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. Bailey now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. 
They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. Being chased out left. Man open left side is Brown. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. The reception good for seven. It's third down. They're giving those short little routes. Tackled him in bounds, too. They're just not wanting to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes. But now you've got to have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. This will be caught by Brown. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Jamarcus Lawrence in there again. My goodness, that is now his fourth sack tonight. And this defense here going to burn their second timeout. But you can also factor in another timeout that they'll get when the clock stops at the two-minute warning. Here comes the D swarming to the line. On second down, here's Roethlisberger escaping the pressure right. And this is caught by Martavis Bryant. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. A good pick up there, 18 yards as they get closer for third down. And the Steelers on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and four. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. And the Steelers on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and four. Here's Roethlisberger, dancing to his left. And he's gonna have to eat this one as down he goes. Malik Collins in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. And he's gonna drop this off to his fullback. And he's not able to get away. He is stopped well, well short of a first down. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> one. They're down to none. Yes, exactly right. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And it'll bring up a second and 14. Again, it's Elliott. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It's a loss of two. Now third down. Now that's a nice play. <laughs> Got me fired up, partner. But can they do it back-to-back -back plays? All the training that you go through as a defense for these situations, when you have to get the ball back, everything you go through, holding up the runner, raking it in the football, getting to the passer, knocking it out of his hands, whatever way they have to get the ball back. Now can they stand tall again for a huge fourth quarter stop? Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. It's away, and it's a high kick here, but not high enough to hit the scoreboard here in Dallas. And that one came close to hitting the big scoreboard up there as the fair catch is made inside the 20-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field.
Now a play fake here on first down. Eluding the pressure right. And he's going to be out of bounds right at the 40. A good pick up there, a 22. Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Now you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. Roethlisberger steps away to his left. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Second and ten now. It's Roethlisberger. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Tyron Crawford in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. And McDonald here over the middle. And one of the whistles for a timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Roethlisberger. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. Trying to get it there to Martavis Bryant. And it's second down. But depending on the team, they call that an explosive play or a chunk play. The one that they got on the previous one. They tried to go back and get another one, didn't they? They did, but unsuccessful on that second attempt. One last shot for Roethlisberger. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Cowboys as we sign off and say so long from Arlington.
I'd rather you than me. If you've been with me from Port of Miami, it's been a journey. <laughs>